Hello students, let's continue our lesson. So in previous class, we have discussed about the hydraulic turbines. We have briefly discussed the classification of turbines and we have also discussed the working range in particular, which range the particular uh, turbine is suited the best. So now let's discuss about the Pelton wheel, okay? Or the Pelton turbine, it is an impulse turbine. So, like in the image is shown here, this is how what the turbine looks like. Okay, it is a complete. This is the bucket. This is the runner. Here is the shaft on which you know this shaft. It when this bucket rotates, it will make the shaft rotate, and then then the electricity is produced. Okay, so with the help of a generator, and the bucket. This is the typical bucket, and here in this region, the jet strikes. Like I have explained previous. Uh, slides. So let's continue this now. So, okay. So let's discuss about the velocity triangle and the work done. As you have already known that <clears throat> in a turbine, in a Pelton wheel, there's a jet and from the jet, there's a uh, jet uh, for the jet strikes the vein at the center point, which splits the jet into two halves and then it goes out of this portion, right? So to construct a velocity triangle, the inlet velocity triangle is very straightforward because the direction of jet and direction of wind is in the same direction, okay? So the relative velocity becomes V, the velocity of the jet minus the velocity of the wind. So the relative velocity is V1. In this case, I have written as V1, that is the velocity of the jet, okay? Minus U, U is the velocity of the vein or the cup, okay? So that is the uh, uh, relative velocity. Now, since this is an, it doesn't have a Y component, it simply has a X component. So VW1 equals V1. That is the important thing that we have to understand from the inlet velocity triangle. So in your examination, you may not need to construct the inlet velocity triangle for Pelton wheel because it is very straightforward. However, there is an outlet velocity triangle. So let's say V2 is the actual velocity with which the water is going out, and then U is the velocity of the vein. Okay, and if you connect the this two point, we get the velocity, the relative velocity that is going out. In our previous studies, we have said the relative velocity at inlet and relative velocity at outlet is same, right? If there is no frictional losses, but in this uh, session of uh, in the Pelton wheel, we in the, most of the questions, okay, it is assumed that there is some losses. So the VW1, uh, sorry, the VR1 or the V1 is slightly more compared to VR2. So there is a factor. Uh, which is slightly less than one is always multiplied with the VR to get VR2, okay? And phi is the angle of deflection. So, and that's it. VF2, the velocity of flow is the Y component of V2 and there's another X component that is VW, which we refer as the velocity, velocity of wind. So there's VW as well, which I did not put it here, but uh, just understand that is the X component of V2. This is it. And in most of the question, it, it refers, I mean, the question would be, you know, the question would say the angle of deflection, okay? The jet is deflected through some angle. So the relationship to get the phi is 180 minus phi is the angle of deflection. Usually this 165 would be given. If it is not given, you can assume it to be 165. Okay, so then phi, this is the angle phi is equal to 180 minus 165. This is exactly the same in what we have discussed in previous videos. Okay, so let's go on. <clears throat> okay, work done by a jet on a Pelton wheel. So like always, work done is given by force times the velocity of the uh, vein that is work done per second. Okay, whatever we calculate here would be work done per second. To do the analysis, what we do is we take a control volume. We have been doing this for a couple of time now. I hope you understand, right? So jet is split from here and it enters this control volume and it comes out. So that this region is shown here. So it 
exactly the direction of wind and direction of jet is same. So V minus U, that is the inlet, that's the relative velocity that is coming, that's entering into the vein. And K is the factor with which there is enough to compensate for the frictional loss within this control volume. We multiply V minus U, that is relative velocity, outgoing relative velocity by a factor, which is slightly less than unity. So this will be more or less given to you. If it is not given, then you are free to assume uh, this k is equal to one. <clears throat> now, like always, let's calculate the value of force. So we know that force is the net change of momentum. So that is the force in x direction equals the momentum outflux in x direction minus momentum influx in x direction. So since f is in negative direction, so I'm putting minus f of x is equal to what is going out? So momentum flux, that is mass into velocity. Mass is rho q, that is clear. Velocity is k times v minus u, that, sorry, in x direction. So x component of this parameter. So k times v minus u cos phi gives us the x component. And this is minus because its direction would be in opposite direction, right? Not the opposite direction, but in minus direction. Our sign convention is this side is positive, this sign is negative. So I always use this sign convention. In this upside, this this direction is positive, and this direction is negative. So I always use that. So you can stick with this. So further, <clears throat> minus what is coming in, and what is coming in is mass times uh, velocity. Mass is rho q times the velocity velocity is v minus u that is the relative velocity so further you can take out minus common then f is equal to minus and rho q also common as well as v minus u is also common so then you get this expression so this is the force okay this is the force this force is in fact the force exerted by the vein onto the jet now force exerted by the jet on the vein will be equal in magnitude opposite in direction which means this f of x would be in this direction equal in magnitude the whatever the parameter whatever the value you get it that is the magnitude and direction would be opposite to what you have this what you opposite to this direction okay now work sorry about that work done Let's just hold a minute okay here we are work done is equal to force into the velocity of the vein so force comes from here times the velocity of the vein so that's it that is the work done per second and let's discuss about the efficiency efficiency is the work done divided by the kinetic initial kinetic energy right so you substitute the value kinetic energy is half mv square okay where v is the absolute velocity of the jet so when you substitute the value you will get 2u times v minus u times k cos phi plus one where k is the uh, factor that tells us that how much friction was there within the plate okay so if it is not given you are free to assume it to be one okay that was the efficiency work done and the force now further let's also derive a condition for maximum efficiency so when can the uh, when can there be a maximum efficiency for a uh, pelton wheel so we know the expression that the efficiency is given by this parameter right so if we differentiate this expression with respect to the velocity of the vein and equate it to zero then we should get a relationship between u and v that gives us the condition for maximum uh, efficiency. So exactly that's what I've done. I have differentiated the efficiency with respect to u and then equate it to, it to zero. Whatever different after differentiating, I equate it to zero for maximum efficiency. So from here we get u is equal to half of v. So that means u maximum velocity, maximum efficiency is achieved when u is equal to half of v so substituting the value of u is equal to half of v in this expression we get this okay so this is the condition for maximum uh, efficiency you may want to also remember this so it could be useful in uh, question solving okay 
and head loss through the bucket. Now we have said we in this case we have compensated with the factor k, right? But if you really wanted to calculate the head loss, then we can use the Bernoulli's principle. So this is the velocity that is entering into the into the bucket, and this v1 is the velocity that is exiting from the bucket. Plus wh is the work that uh, work head, okay? This is known as the work head. The work done that is already work that is done on the vein by the water so that much head is lost because it has done work on the vein plus plus the hf hf is the frictional loss so from this equation we can get the actual head loss in the bucket with this we now come to the design of belt and wheel so there are about eight steps so let's go one by one so let's start with the velocity of the jet so velocity of the jet is calculated this is the theoretical velocity of the jet okay v is equal to 2 g h now from where this comes we know that v square by 2 g right v square by 2 g is equal to velocity head or h from that expression we can make velocity is equal to 2 root of 2 g h where h is the head and again this is a theoretical so in reality the, this fellow the actual velocity would be slightly less than a theoretical velocity to compensate that we multiply with the factor that is known as the velocity coefficient and usually it says the velocity of coefficient ranges from 0 0.97 to 0 0.99 so if 0 0.99 is the velocity coefficient which means there is very less frictional loss at the nozzle okay and for maximum efficiency condition, we have already derived that U has to be half of V. However, it was observed that maximum efficiency is achieved when U is 0 0.46 times V. So this is this value. This is what we have derived theoretically. This is numerically, okay? They have done experiments based on their experimental findings. It is now, it is you now observed that the maximum uh, efficiency is achieved when u is 0.46 v likewise in to calculate u you some simply substitute the value of uh, v which is in fact the k times the root of 2 gh so that gives us the u now when you multiply 0.46 with k then we can instead of using this we can give a new coefficient by the name uh, speed ratio okay so, so ku is the speed ratio and that varies from 0 0.343 to 0 0.47 further angle of deflection of a belt and wheel if it is not explicitly mentioned then you can you are free to assume it is the 165 degrees okay usually in belt and wheel the angle of deflection is 165 degrees so 180 minus 5 is equal to 165 that gives us 5 is equal to 15 degrees and the area of jet we use the continuity equation to find the area of jet okay the not act to be precise area of jet but diameter of jet what should be the diameter of jet to calculate the diameter of jet we use the continuity equation we know discharge we know velocity right so from this expression we can make the diameter we can calculate the diameter of the jet further the pitch diameter of the pelton wheel if it rotates at the speed of n rpm so we know the relation, right? The uh, angular velocity and the tangential velocity. So u is the tangential velocity, which is given by two pi n r by 60, or r can be written as d by two. So finally we get the diameter of the wheel. This pitch wheel means exactly at the point, diameter of the wheel, exactly at the point where the jet strikes the cup. So that is the pitch diameter means, okay? So from this relationship, we can calculate the diameter. Now further, one more term comes, that is the jet ratio. Now jet ratio and the significance is, jet ratio is the ratio of wheel diameter, this diameter, to the jet diameter. And usually the value varies from, for nominal values considered between 11 and 14. And for most of the time, M is equal to 12 is adopted. And the significance of the jet ratio is if jet is small, 
then the you will end up designing your bucket too closely okay if jet is uh, if m is large then you are going to make your turbine very bulky so this may reduce your efficiency so you may have to play with this a bit to get the maximum efficiency so and again this everything it cannot be done theoretically it has to have some model testing that's why we are studying all this dimensional analysis we have to do some model testing because there are so many ambiguities coming in place and how many number of buckets should be there in a belted wheel so it is given by kagan's formula and this formula operates between the jet ratio of between 6 to 36 jet ratio between 6 to 36 and it's given by number of bucket is equal to half of the jet ratio plus 15 and as well and then last is the number of jets it is said that if one jet produces p power then n jet produces n times p power indicating that if there are more number of jet then the power also increases by the by a factor by a number of you know increase by the how many jets are there that simply you could multiply with the power with the one jet and then you get the the total overall power okay so it is also mentioned here if a jet produces p power then n number of jet produces n p power this n is the number of jet so with this let's try to solve a problem then the problem statement is the bucket of a pelton impulse turbine or pelton turbine deflects the jet to a total angle of 165 degrees if it was not mentioned you are free to assume 165 degrees and owing to the surface friction the relative velocity of water leaving the bucket is 0 0.8 times that the entry so this 0 0.85 is the k like we have discussed right is a factor by which the relative velocity is getting reduced draw the velocity vector diagram at entry and exit and find the ratio of bucket velocity to jet velocity in, in order that water shall leave the bucket without width so the y component of the outgoing velocity has to be zero so that is what means in order and in this to con to achieve this condition the y the v2 has to be such that its x component is zero so it has to be really the outside in such a turbine, the available head at the nozzle is, so it's saying that head is 10, uh, head is 650 mm, uh, 650 meter. The coefficient of velocity for nozzle is 0 0.97. So this is the, to calculate the uh, actual velocity, we have to multiply the theoretical velocity with this, uh, this coefficient to get the actual velocity. The jet diameter is 10 centimeter. The mean bucket uh, circle diameter is 1.2 meter or pitch diameter. Using the condition referred to above, determine best running speed, impulsive force, power, efficiency. So we have basically derived for every everything that has been asked here. We have derived an equation. So we simply substitute the equation here and get the value. To begin with. Let's start by drawing the velocity triangle. Velocity triangle at inlet is not required because we know that it is, you know, direction of jet and direction of wind is seen to get a relative velocity. We simply subtract that. That is very straightforward. So I have not drawn it. So that is this is the outlet velocity triangle. So V2 has to be such that its x component or the tangential component is zero. That is only achieved when V2 is perpendicular to U. So I have drawn that way, and this is the relative velocity this is the velocity of the wind to calculate the velocity v1 or the inlet velocity we have we have to use the v is equal to the coefficient times root of 2 g h so it gives, which gives us this is the velocity at inlet and the relative velocity is again the relative velocity at outlet is given by a factor that is a that is accounting for the all the losses times v minus u and this gives us the uh, velocity or uh, the relative velocity outgoing relative velocity note that we don't know u so we just get it as u so let this be equation two since the water lives without wind this angle is beta is 90 degree and further 
u is the x component of vr2 observe from this diagram u is the x component of vr2 so which means u is equal to vr2 cos this angle is phi right so phi is 15 degrees so let this be equation 3 so from equation 2 and 3 we can make vr2 the subject and then replace vr2 here and then then we get an equation in terms of u and we can solve this u so u comes to be 49.38 meter per second now the speed yes we know that 2 pi n by 60 2 pi n r right 2 pi r times n divided by 60 gives us the speed so from that relationship we can calculate the speed further once we know the diameter of the jet right we can calculate the discharge as well so this is already given so yeah we can then calculate the discharge now force is force is we have already derived the equation for force right everything is known rho is known q i have just calculated here v is known u is known k is also given cos phi is known so you simply substitute the value you get in newton and power is force power or work done is the force times the velocity of the vein so simply multiply the force times the u then you get the power and for the efficiency we have already derived the efficiency equation simply substitute and get the efficiency as well with this i would like to give you a homework question and there's another one more question there i want you to go through this question i have given you the solution okay i want you to go through if there's any doubt please consult me okay with this i would like to end this video here thank you we'll continue uh with the next video next time thank you